Here we have an electric furnace, and it's a fairly standard one. It's 15 kW because it has three elements at 5 kW each. It has a sequencer here, which is a stack type sequencer, and it has a few problems, and I'm going to fix them. But mostly what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this sequencer and I'm going to put a contactor in there. Okay, before I get started on this thing, I want to let you know, this is really not much of a do-it-yourself project. This is aimed more towards service techs. Uh, you can do it, I guess, if you got a lot of knowledge about electric and know pretty much how these things work. But this is a tough one to, to tackle if you're not in the business. So I really don't recommend a do-it-yourselfer to try to do this. Okay, so back to the job. Uh, to me, this is a better way to control these things than a sequencer. Uh, these sequencers are known for failure. Uh, I have put many contactors in these electric furnaces, and I have yet to have one fail. I will be going over a couple of things with this thing first. We're going to do a few repairs, and then we're going to replace that sequencer. Now, if you watch a lot of my videos, I've used this furnace before. So I want to show you what's wrong with one of the limits down here. Okay, we're going to zoom in on this limit here. Now, obviously, the power's off. I wouldn't be sticking my fingers in there. Uh, you've got to make sure it's off, too. If there's two breakers, or very commonly are two breakers, make sure that they're off. Check them with a volt uh, tester, a non-contact voltage tester. Okay. This one here, you can see it's <laughs> a little problem here. Oh, yeah, hmm. Okay. Uh, probably what happened is the sequencer stuck on. Could have been a plug filter too. But uh, this limit would kick off because it's overheating. And then it would go back on and it would kick off. Well, eventually they'll just burn up. And that's what happened to that. I'm going to replace that. Now here, we actually have the same problem. If you look close at this, you'll see there's a little bubble right there. And that means that one's been overheating too. That, that bubble is, is the overheat. So I'm going to replace both of those. And that's part of this repair. As with most situations with electric furnaces, you've got assorted burned up wires. Here we've got one right here. You can see this one, it's discolored. This one here, same thing. Probably see a little better if I take it off. You can see that's discolored. Those are gonna have to be replaced. Uh, this is really common with these electric furnaces. These push-on connections, uh, Everybody uses them. I look at them as a piece of junk. I don't think they're a good idea. Uh, they do too much of this sort of thing. And so I'm not happy with them. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this sequencer and, of course, these limit switches. And then let's look at what we've got. When I'm putting on these terminals, I'm fairly picky about it. Of course, you're using yellow terminals because they're for number 10 and number 12. But when I crimp these things, I crimp them on the back side. Now, you notice this side, I don't put the crimp there because it splits up the terminal. I go to the back and I crimp like that. Now, that puts just a little hole in there. Okay, the uh, contactor's installed. Contactor's right here. That's a 50 amp contactor, and it'll handle up to four uh, 25 amp elements. And it's only got three elements in it. So uh, one side has one wire coming off it, and the other side has two. This considerably cleans up the installation, and gives me a better quality product when I use that contactor. 
Now, this contactor here is not designed for electric heat. And the only difference between one that's designed for electric heat and one that, and then this one here, is this one's a little noisier. You can buy contactors that are designed just for electric heat. I'll see if I can find some part numbers on those uh, and let you know at the end of this video. And here's those part numbers. One of them's for 25 amp and one of them's for a 50 amp contactor. They're just silent operating contactors is all they are. But the way this is set up, when I turn on the thermostat, and I'm just going to jump it out, all you're going to hear is the click of the contactor coming in, all the elements are on, and the fan's on. There's no sequencing to this. Sequencing, as, in, as is done with the sequencers like uh, this wonderful thing here, uh, for a while it was considered to be the best way to do it because putting all the elements on at the same time uh, could kind of overload the um, circuitry. Well, it really didn't, and uh, most of the transformers on the poles and stuff are upgraded enough to, so it's uh, not any big deal. And some manufacturers, their furnaces come out with contactors, not sequencers. Sequencers are cheaper than contactors. That's pretty much the reason they're used. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clamp all three of these wires. Now, I've also, I have replaced the limits that were uh, failed. And so we're ready to go. Uh, this is going to immediately put the amp draw up to the normal amps. Okay, now I just jumpered is all I did. Now you see you're running about 66 amps. Okay, now if I go to each one of these elements, I got 19 there. Twenty-two there, that's interesting, a little bit different. And twenty-two there. Okay, so and then the total up total comes up to the sixty-five. Uh, I want you to note a couple of things I've done. The contactor, even though it has push-on terminals in there, I use the ring terminal. When I work in electric furnaces, I always use as many ring terminals as I can. They are a far better quality connection than the quarter inch push-on connection. The push-on connection, I don't know, they're always, always burning up. Uh, so I use the uh, ring terminals as much as I can. If you're uh, doing something like the fan motor, here's the fan motor line. Uh, you know, it's no big deal, uh, and I'll put a push on in that. But the fan comes on as soon as the contactor comes on, and when the uh, thermostat no longer calls for heat, like right now, okay, they're all off. And you can look down there, there you can see they've all turned off. Do that one more time. Okay. It's all on, it's all off. Some folks say, well, gee whiz, you need to clear the heat out of the furnace. Well, electric furnaces have very little heat in them. When the elements go off, almost all the heat's pulled off of them anyway. So it's, it's really not a big deal. Notice up here, I put the push-on terminals on and because that's the only way I could hook them up. I've replaced a lot of wires here. This is all number 10 wiring. I don't use 12. Some of these things will use 12 from the factory, but I always replace it with number 10. Uh, just too many problems with 12. It's too much on the edge. But uh, make sure everything's tight. Every connection you can find, make sure it's tight. Make sure when you do this contactor, one of the things about it, because I have two elements running off of one set of contacts here, 
go over to your breakers and be sure those two wires are going to the same side. Like these are both going to L1. Be sure the two are going to the same terminal like it's L1 right here. Now this is one breaker right there. There's another breaker right there. We don't want anything mixed up between the two breakers. So if I was to take the wires that came off of here, now there's two wires coming off there. So if I go to L2 in that same breaker, I have a wire here and I follow it down and it goes to here. That goes into that second element, then it comes out of the element right there, goes over to this side. And if I go to the bottom one, I have the same thing. I have a wire coming from L2 on this breaker, going to here, coming out, and going to the same side. So one of the biggest problems with these things is if you don't, if you get these mixed up, uh, and you take an L1 off of one side and an L2 off of the other or something like that, you're going to have yourself a kind of a dangerous situation. So be sure all these things are done and make sure you're not crossing from one breaker to the other. Make sure that these wires go out and come back to the same set of breakers. And it's the same thing with these. Now this other one here, all this is, is it's... Uh, one element so I, I'm not going to mix that one up so easily the one element and the controls are all on this set of breakers make sure now let's uh, take a close look at the breaker again okay make sure see this is a 60 amp breaker it'll handle two elements I've got my two elements on there if you get your two elements on the 30 amp breaker what it's going to do is it's going to run until you get in the truck and get down the road about uh, 20 miles and it's going to kick the breaker off and shut it down. So make sure that if I'm running two elements I got at least a 60 amp breaker, one of course I can do a 30 and so on. So just be careful of that stuff and follow up everything you do. One of the things that bothered me about the way this thing was set up before we did any work on it was it was just wires and wire nuts and just all sorts of junk all over the place. And I really did kind of wanted to get it a little bit cleaned up so it's a little more sensible. It's not just a uh, rat's nest. So anyway, that's how to replace sequencer with a contact. Recommended not for the do-it-yourselfer. The do-it-yourselfer probably shouldn't do this unless he's really good with electricity. This is a tough one to get right. It took me years to figure out how to do this. Make sure you know what you're doing when you do it uh, before you get involved with something you can't handle. Anyway, that's changing over a sequencer to a contactor on the electric furnace.